Hi everyone, welcome to another lesson in the motion series, this one focusing on energy and stopping distance. We'll set up a question very quickly. A bike rider with bike with initial velocity of 40 kilometers per hour and combined mass, so the bike and the person, of 90 kilograms, whose brakes can apply a force of 800 newtons. So the force of the brakes is 800 newtons on the ground, therefore by Newton's third law, 800 newtons backwards on the bicycle. This bike rider sees a car suddenly pull out eight meters in front of him or her. So we'll say that distance there is eight meters. If at this point in time the bike rider slams on the brakes and experiences a force of 800 newtons in the direction opposite to the motion, so taking positive velocity that direction, let's see if they will hit that car. So first of all recognize when those brakes are slammed on, since the bike rider is moving in this direction and the force is in the negative direction, work is being done against the motion of that bike. So the work done on that bicycle is equal to the force, we'll say negative 800, multiplied by the distance they slide. Now this, or distance they, they break, we'll say break. The bike will not necessarily break over this entire 8 meters. It may break over less than 8 meters, over 5 meters say. It may break over more than 8 meters, in which case it will have hit the car with some velocity because it's not able to break uh, through the car. It will just impact the car and come to a stop. So the work done by the brake on that bicycle is equal to negative 800 multiplied by, we'll say, D, the distance it takes for that bike to come to a stop. Let's see what the initial kinetic energy of that bike was. EK is equal to a half M, which is 90, times V squared, times 40 squared. Big mistake right there. When we use energy formulae, we have to use meters, seconds, and kilograms. But this velocity is in kilometers per hour. So I'm going to change that 40 kilometers an hour to meters a second. So I go 40 divided by 3.6, so that's kilometers per hour divided by, well that, to get, yeah, that, that gets a bit tricky, the units down here. Let's just say 40 divided by 3.6 is equal to eleven point one one meters per second. So forty kilometers an hour is equal to eleven point one one meters per second. So we can find the kinetic energy now. It's a half times ninety times eleven point one one squared. That comes to a total of around five thousand five hundred and fifty five joules. This is the amount of kinetic energy that the work is trying to overcome. So if it's got 5,555 worth of kinetic energy in that direction there, then the work which is being done in that direction there has to take away all that energy. Let's see for how many meters that force has to be applied until it takes away all that energy there. So negative 800 times D have to change that to a positive is equal to 5555j. The reason I changed that to a positive is otherwise I'd have to say negative 800d plus 5555 gives us final zero energy. But I'll change it to a positive so I can have 5555 on the other side. So the distance required to take away 5555 uh, joules worth of energy by using a force of 800 newtons is equal to 5555 divided by 800 which is equal to 6.94 or roundabout 6.94 meters. 
So the stopping distance of this bike is equal to 6.94 meters. The car is eight meters in front of the bike, so we will not see an impact there. But let's change one of the initial conditions of this information, of this question. Instead of having an initial velocity of 40 kilometers an hour, let's change that to 60 kilometers per hour. which is equal to, we need to put that in meters per second, so 60 divided by 3.6 is equal to 16.67 meters per second. The work done by the brake is still equal to negative 800 multiplied by the distance it takes for this bike to stop. And if the distance is greater than 8 meters, it means the bike will impact there but the kinetic energy of the bike has changed. The kinetic energy is now a half m, which is 90, times v, 16.67 squared, which comes to a total of, now let's see, that would be, I have 12,500, but I think that's not accurate enough, times 90, times 16.67, 12,000, 500, we'll just leave it at 500 joules. So that may change depending on how accurate uh, you make your decimal here. So the work done by the brake has to be equal to that amount of energy there. 800 D is equal to 12,500. D is equal to 12,500 divided by 800. That is... 15.6 meters. So it will take way more than 8 meters for that bike to come to a stop if it was traveling at 16.67 meters per second at the beginning. Let's find now the velocity of the bike at the moment of impact. So if its initial kinetic energy was 12,500 and it breaks all the way up until it hits the car there, then the total work done by the brakes is equal to 800 times 8 or 6,400 joules. So it started off with 12,500 joules worth of energy caused by motion in that direction and it had 6,400 joules worth of energy done in the opposite, worth of work done in the opposite direction. So the final kinetic energy is going to equal 12,500 take away 6,400, which is equal to 6,100 joules. So at the moment of impact, the bike had 6,100 joules worth of kinetic energy. And now we can solve the final part of the question. That 6,500 joules, sorry, 6,100 joules worth of kinetic energy must have been equal to a half, the mass of the bike and the person, times the velocity upon impact squared. So two times 6,100 divided by 90 is equal to V squared, taking the square root of both sides, gives us V equals the square root of two times 6,100 6, divided by 90, which comes to 11.64 meters per second multiplying that by 11.64 times 3.6 shows us that that is 41.9 kilometers per hour, which is very close to the initial velocity in the first part of our question. So that shows us if you just add on an extra 50% to the speed, so it was 40 kilometers an hour, and now it's 60 kilometers per hour. The uh, velocity upon impact is incredibly large. And what that basically shows us is that the real loss in velocity happens over the last little bit of the braking distance. Hence the Victorian uh, Transport Authority. No, that's that, they run public transport. Whoever ran the Wipe Off 5 campaign was trying to tell you that. 
if you up your velocity just by a little bit, your stopping distance increases dramatically.